uh, the question I've got is, um, we are um, planning to set up a special panel um, to um, give endorsement for registries that are specifically for recruitment of um, patients into research. So that includes a sort of consent for consent or consent to be approached registries that exist. Some of them are disease specific and some of them are sort of trust based. I think we might have a few national ones now as well. Um, I'm just sitting there thinking, should we be putting cohorts in, into the panel? So the, the, the thing about endorsement is it's not, it's not a requirement. Nobody has, has to come to us um, for, for endorsement. But the beauty of having the endorsement is that when you take individual studies to a rec, they won't look at the recruitment process again um, because it's already been sort of endorsed by the HRA. Um, so they would just look at the study but not ask questions about how the patients are going to be recruited because that bit has already been covered in the endorsement. So would it make sense to take cohorts in, into it, the endorsement process of this panel? I can, I can see for something like you know, the South Yorkshire cohort where you've got a very big cohort and you're going to be doing multiple studies over time, it could make a lot of sense. And maybe for some other smaller ones, it wouldn't make any sense. I don't know. So open that up. So when, I, when I did my presentation yesterday, you saw that I had uh, registry slash TWIC studies. Mm, and, I, yes. and the reason I combined them was because I wasn't very sure what the difference was between a registry study and a TWIC study in which the register is defined as a group of people in the cohort. Mm. I'm not sure, I couldn't find the difference. They're starting to be a crossover, isn't there? Yes. I think. Yes. <laughs> I think that comes back to my prior point. I mean, I, it drives me nuts when people say, well, is it a double blind trial? And they say, well, here are the people who are being blinded. And they say, well, is it double blind? You know, we can't fit things into these yeah. neat categories. We've got to think, what is the methodological technique we're using? And does that introduce bias? Does it cause problems? And, you know, rather than screens, it's not screens, it's registered. So if, if we did that, for those of you in the UK, would that, would that be a helpful approach? Sarah Sutherland will I think lots of people are thinking about setting um, cohorts up that are open ended in terms of there's not a finite number of RCTs in their planning. For those people, it's clearly advantageous to have a time uh, to that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what, what we, we're drawing up some principles to support the panel, so what I might do, if that's okay, is maybe circulate the principles um, for those that might be interested. Yeah, okay, thank you, that's useful.